Hello everybody, this is Alan and today we're testing two of macro photography's most beloved lenses. There are good reasons that these two lens systems are as beloved as they are. The lenses we're comparing today are not lenses that you would normally think of comparing. It's the Mitutoyo 5x APO Long Working Distance Infinity Corrected Microscope Objective and the EL Neco 50mm f2.8 N in larger lens. The reason you wouldn't normally think about comparing these is the uh, range of magnifications that we normally use the EL Nikkor for are about 1.5 to 3.5 times magnification. Uh, the reason we use it in that range is because with the bellows, at least, you can't get closer in than uh, with the bellows completely collapsed and that gives you about one and a half times magnification so that's the lower limit you could use extension tubes and get it even lower uh, but for the maximum uh, magnification i usually stop around three and a half or possibly four times magnification it will go higher than that with more extension but as you add more bellows extension you are also moving closer and closer to the diffraction limitation uh, when your effective aperture gets above around 20. So what we try to do is keep it below that. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is to use it for magnifications up to about three and a half or four. Uh, that means that these two lenses uh, normally wouldn't be compared. Uh, if you're using one lens up to three and a half and the other one picks it up at five, uh, they don't really overlap. So there's not a whole lot of point comparing them. But there is a special case called short focus that allows us to use uh, an objective at a lower magnification than its nominal rated uh, magnification number. Uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. But when we use the Mitutoyo 5X uh, with a short focus technique, what we end up with is a very, very sharp three times objective, it's actually a little, little more, 3.2 times objective, uh, which is exactly where we would be using our EL Nikkor. So all of a sudden, these two lenses that have been complementary uh, and part of uh, a good macro photographer's uh, set uh, are now uh, competing head to head. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to see if the short focused Mitutoyo 5X objective is as sharp as, or as flat as, or gives as good a picture as the EL Nikkor 50mm f 2.8 N, also shot at three times magnification. The way the test is going to be conducted is about as simple as it gets. I'm simply going to take some photographs with the two setups, holding everything else absolutely the same to the extent that that's possible. So what we'll do first is I'll just show you the, the actual setups that I'm going to be using. Uh, then I'll explain a little bit about what short focus is and why we would want to use it and uh, how you can use it with other lenses. And then uh, we'll look at the pictures. So let's get over to my shooting platform and let me show you what the lens assemblies look like. So this is my standard uh, horizontal setup for the uh, Mitu Toyo. Uh, and in short focus, now normally when I'm using a Mitu Toyo 5X, I'll use either an ITL 200 or possibly a DCR 150 uh, Raynox, which I would have in the reverse orientation. But if you can see here, uh, you'll, you'll see that the Raynox is actually in the forward orientation and it is very close to the sensor. I actually only have about 124 millimeters separating the two, the relay lens from the sensor. And then I have my usual um, distance, about 70 millimeters in front of the Raynox before you get to the Mitutoyo. Now, what is short focus and, and, and why is this different? Well, what we're using is a shorter focal length uh, lens. The focal length of the microscope objective is 40 millimeters. 
The focal length of the Raynox is 125 millimeters. The way we calculate the magnification is simply by dividing the focal length of the objective into the focal length of the relay lens, which gives us right about just a little bit more than three times magnification, about 3.2 times. Now you probably asking how did I come up with 124 millimeters well that is simply by taking off the objective there when the objective's off I take this as it is outside or I point it outside and I focus the camera on a distant object uh, usually a, a building or a tree or something like that and I use the the bellows extension to focus the lens as soon as I get it in sharp focus with my image fully magnified on the back, then I make note of the distance between the sensor and the Rainox, and we're good to go. And that is always going to be focused at infinity when it's in this position. So with that now focused to infinity, I just add my objective. And then from that point on, I do my focusing by moving the whole thing as opposed to just moving the, the, uh, the front standard to change the focus, now I start moving the entire camera lens assembly forward and backward to focus on my, uh, my specimen. And then what I did was just, uh, I, I did a regular focus stacked series for each of the lenses. Now, oftentimes what I'll do is once I have a lens assembly on, I'll shoot all of my images with that particular lens all at the same time. But because I wanted this to be as uh, realistic a comparison as possible, I actually stopped after each uh, series of shots and switched out the lenses and then reshot the same uh, the same shot. Now, you're going to pro probably see that I had to change my lights a, a little bit each time because the lenses are a bit different and I wanted the lighting to be comparable. I still used three MF12s. Uh, everything was the, the, the same and I still used the same diffusion, but I, I wanted to make sure that I was using the best possible light in each case. Uh, let me show you the, the second lens. So this is the lens that we're comparing it to. This is the EL Nickel. This is an enlarger lens that we use in reverse, but it goes on backwards, the fat end facing the camera, uh, right onto the bellows actually, with uh, just a, there is a, an adapter that will go from this to the bellows with nothing else, but I have a couple of rings to, to get there. I use a lens hood with this. Uh, I think it's important, it, it gives better contrast. And this goes directly on the end of the bellows. Now, what I did was, seeing as the magnification of this setup, the Mitu Toyo is gonna to be fixed, it's not going to, to be variable like this. To vary the magnification with this, I simply expand the bellows. I collapse them all the way down for minimum 1.5 magnification, and I stretch them as far out as I want to increase the magnification. So to figure out my magnification, I just photographed the stainless steel engineer's ruler, and uh, I counted up the, the number of uh, millimeters that were showing in the horizontal orientation, and then uh, divided that into the size of the sensor, which is 23.5 millimeters in this camera, and came up with a magnification that I was getting from this setup. And then for the EL Nickel, it was just a matter of putting it on the bellows and then extending the bellows and then focusing the camera until I was able to get exactly the same magnification, which was about eight millimeters on the sensor. As soon as I had eight millimeters, and I wasn't using millimeters, I was using inches because I couldn't find my, my millimeter ruler, but don't worry about it. I just converted it all to millimeters. So with this in place, I could get exactly the same magnification. I noted what my extension was. And then from that point on, every time I put this on, I put it back to that extension and kept shooting. So we should be getting very much the same magnification from both lenses. Now for each of these shots, I took uh, it with the first image, which is a Weevil, uh, I took more images than I normally would. I calculated the step length at three times magnification, and then I used a step length more like what I would use at five times magnification. 
Don't ask me why. I think it was because when I looked at the subject, it had a lot of detail in different image planes. I mean, that there's a is his snout is coming out sideways across the frame and his antennae are coming towards the camera. So I wanted to make sure I got all of that detail. Uh, so I took very short steps. So the steps were, were numerous and the stacks were deep. I think it was like 450 images for each of the stacks. I very deliberately in the second image, which is a clown weevil, took longer steps. Uh, I took more uh, typical steps about what you get from calculating the steps in uh, Zirin Stacker. So they were uh, a little bit more reasonable for uh, a 3x magnification. I think my step length for the first set of images was about 12 or 13 microns, which is way shorter than I calculated, which was about 20. And for the uh, second set of images, for the clown weevil, which was a slightly bigger uh, insect, I went to a much more um, uh, usual type of uh, step length of about 22, 24 uh, microns. Either way, the images came out fine. I did take some additional test images just to check a few things, uh, to look at for distortion and uh, aberrations of that type. Uh, and we'll refer to those pictures when we talk about some of the findings, which actually we're gonna do right now. The pictures are all done, they've all been processed, and I have looked at every one of them. I've also had some other people look at them. And uh, the results are pretty clear, I think. Uh, I am gonna show you some representative examples of the photographs that I think best illustrate my points. But rest assured, these things showed up in every photograph, the things I'm gonna tell you about. Uh, once I got done shooting everything APS-C, I went back and I reshot everything with a full frame camera because I realize a lot of people don't use APS-C, though they may be using it a little more after this. Um, to remind you, what we're testing is the, uh, the Mitutoyo 5x microscope objective, the long working distance APO uh, optic, that we are short focusing to three times magnification or just over three times magnification using a Raynox DCR250, a 125 millimeter uh, focal length relay lens. The effect is that that turns the, the five times objective into a three times objective, but makes the uh, image appear to be quite a bit sharper. And uh, we'll certainly see that happening uh, in, in this test. The uh, other lens that we were looking at was, of course, the EL Nikkor 50 millimeter f 2.8 n one of my favorite lenses, uh, one of the most versatile lenses in macro photography, as well as one of the least expensive, most available, and uh, just an all-round winner. But is it going to compete against our star, the Mitutayo 5? Well, it does. It does compete very nicely because there are a few very serious drawbacks with a Mitu Toyo. The thing that is most immediately obvious when you look at the uh, Mitu Toyo photographs on a full frame sensor is that this optic uh, setup is not going to cover a full frame camera, not even close. It's also not going to completely cover a crop frame camera because there's significant degradation of image quality as you get towards the corners. So hardly surprisingly, pushing down a five times objective to three times magnification uh, with a 125 millimeter relay lens uh, is gonna make uh, coverage the main issue with the Mitutoyo. Not so with the enlarger lens. The EL Nikkor functions really well at about three times magnification, but not at uh, an f-stop of 5.6. That's a little bit tight at this magnification and it does cause softening. And you can see this in all of the photographs that were taken at f5.6. When the aperture was opened up a little bit to f4, most of the diffraction softening went away and we still had a sharp image from corner to corner. So clearly coverage is vastly uh, improved uh, on this lens, which is of course designed to get full coverage on a 35 millimeter a film or sensor. So in addition to the different cameras, different sensor sizes, I went ahead and shot a battery of tests using the EL Nickel 50 
at uh, f4 instead of f5.6, which pulled it back below the obvious diffraction uh, level, but it didn't bring it down to 2.8 where we would expect to see other types of uh, aberration. And then I took a bunch of photographs of uh, flat surfaces to see if there was any uh, degradation of the flatness of this lens. And what we saw with the EL nickel was that at f5.6, it really is soft compared to the Metutoyo. Uh, and in these two pictures uh, of, a, of uh, a weevil, you can see the difference is pretty dramatic. Uh, with one uh, showing much sharper, crisper edges and um, nicer color too, whereas the um, uh, the the uh, enlarger lens is a little bit soft throughout. But uh, you'll notice it's also soft everywhere. Uh, it doesn't get better towards the edges. It doesn't get worse towards the edges either. It's the same level of just not quite as sharp as the Mitutoyo. Why? Why is that happening? Well, it's just a, a, a function of diffraction because in the photographs where I decreased the F number to F4, uh, which uh, increased the size of the aperture considerably, that diffraction softening went away. Now, the lens didn't become as sharp as a Mitutoyo is in the center of the image. Nothing got that sharp, uh, but it got much sharper and made for a very uh, nice picture. In every case, the uh, Mitutoyo is sharper than the EL Nickel. Even when the EL Nickel is opened up to F4, uh, it's still not quite as sharp, but that's only in the center of the image. The other thing you notice is that on the EL Nickel, whatever you get at the center of the image, you also get at the edges. It's very consistent across the field and there's no distortion or aberrations. Uh, and that's not the case with the um, uh, Mitutoyo. In fact, it's very, very pronounced on a full frame camera, less so on the crop frame camera. Uh, but with the Mitutoyo, as you get away from the center, you start to see softening as well as aberrations. And the uh, aberrations are of the comma type and uh, pretty ugly looking they are too. Now, uh, I did one other thing. I wanted to be absolutely sure that, that I wasn't seeing any kind of uh, geometric abnormalities, any barrel distortion or anything else, any pin cushion in the uh, pictures of the flat uh, print head shot with the, the uh, EL nickel. So what I've done in one of these pictures is I have rotated the image. That is all I have done. I haven't done any other correction to it. I tried to shoot it flat and straight, but it ended up being slightly rotated. All I have done is rotate it back to a true. And then I've laid a grid uh, that I custom made in Photoshop to have exactly the same number of the repeating features across and down the image. And I overlaid it right on top of those lines. And if you look closely, I'm gonna leave this picture up for a while, follow any of those horizontal or vertical lines and you don't see any curvature of the, of the reference underneath it. Everything stays completely straight and true. And that's what a flat lens does. So what does that leave us with? It leaves us with two great lens systems, neither of which are perfect for everything. And as is the case in almost everything we do in macro photography, the right choice is a compromise. And uh, the, the compromise is going to depend on your subject, your camera, uh, what you're trying to accomplish with the picture and a bunch of other things. So if you are shooting a uh, short focused Mitutoyo um, objective, using the DCR250. You should do so on a crop frame camera. You should probably do so against a black or a white background. In other words, without subject in the background that's meant to be in focus and uh, keep your subject right in the middle of the picture. That's what I do. That's what I use this lens for. I use it to photograph small things against big backgrounds so that you don't see the comma uh, and you only see the sharpness. If I'm photographing something that I want to cover a full frame sensor, 
or if I want something uh, that has got subject matter that needs to be in focus all the way to the edges, I don't really have a choice with the, uh, of these two lenses at three times magnification. The only one that's going to do that is the enlarger lens. So the EL Nikkor is a fantastic lens. It's so useful for, for uh, changing magnification to, uh, to uh, fit the photograph that you're taking. Uh, it's very easy and quick to change the length of the bellows to do so. You do need to remember that as you get to higher and higher magnifications, you really have to open up that aperture and keep an eye out for the kind of aberrations that are ruining the Mitutoyo images because they'll come into these pictures too. So keep a very close watch out for that. The um, uh, Mitutoyo, on the other hand, is the perfect choice of lens if you've got a solitary subject in the middle of a very black or white uh, background with no detail that needs to be in focus. Then you can get all of your sharpness right in the center and you can get spectacular dramatic pictures that way. Uh, but as you can see, neither one of these is a perfect solution for every eventuality. A good studio will, will have both, and you'll use both. And I use both, and they're not interchangeable. They're, they have their own role. Okay, that's it. That's, uh, that's all the wisdom I have for you today. Not much wisdom, is it? Thanks to my Patreon supporters and everybody else who does stuff to help me. I do appreciate you. I do indeed. Couldn't do this without you. Don't know where you're going to see me next. Uh, a Patreon meeting possibly or a live stream. Could be in a video. Could be in the Photoshop special coming up next week. You could see me in the street if I ever left this house. Which I might do right now seeing as this video is done. Have a good day. I'll see you again soon. Be safe.